Uh, on Talk TV on Sunday, my colleague, our former Tory MP Nick Dubois, uh, got the big scoop, got the sit down with Nadine Doris, also my Talk TV colleague. Everybody's my Talk TV colleague. Uh, it's her maj it's uh, His Majesty the King, my Talk TV colleague. No, seriously. Uh, so Nadine, uh, you will all now know, uh, launched a furious attack on Rishi Sunak uh, and what she called his non-Tory government. Uh, let's have a listen. It's not even angry. You know, this is the thing, again, the misogyny. If a man had written that letter, they wouldn't be calling it angry. It's because it's a woman who's written that letter. And I think it's a factual letter that lays out, and you know, tell me a point in that letter. The one thing people are saying, the critics, is they criticise me. They come up with the misogyny and the sexism, and then they say, but I can't disagree with a word in the letter. So that she, she's talking there, uh, John, about the 1,800-word open letter that she were, wrote in the mail, which absolutely eviscerated Rishi and his no, feelings. No, he didn't. It well, was 1,800 words of absolute tosh. Well, I, I, I'm, yeah, I, I'm not saying... I'm not, I'm not making any comment about the quality of her open letter. But... Uh, is that going to damage uh, Rishi Sunak? No, uh, not anymore. And was she, was she right to do that? No, of course she wasn't. I mean, and, not, and it's not going to do any more damage than she's already done by causing a by-election, yeah. an unhelpful by-election in uh, mid bedfordshire I mean, which is actually going to be fascinating, by the way, because yeah, yeah. because Labour and Lib Dems are both refusing yeah. to give way to each other yeah. in, uh, in, in, in trying to take it So that it might on, be the, which... uh, a telling factor for the Tories, because she thinks that the her successor can just about hang on to it. In fairness to her, I think she built up a majority of 20,000 or so. So no, it's nonsense. You, you, you do not cause a by-election uh, in, in, in a government at this stage of a, of a parliament unless you're unless you're deliberately trying to undermine the prime minister, and that's yeah. what she's that's what she's trying yeah, to do. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, she's, and all this absurd conspiracy theory in the 1800 words about you know a small cabal of people bringing down the prime minister. One of that small cabal of people. Was Nadine Doris, who who had no confidence in in David Cameron, had no confidence in Theresa May, uh, and just happened to be a Boris Johnson fan fan girl. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, you know, I don't speak ill of my colleague, of course, my esteemed colleague. <laughs> but, uh, she does. Uh follow uh, <laughs> Boris rather enthusiastically, doesn't she? Uh, let's move on. Uh, let's talk about the uh, famous Bibby Stockholm barge. Uh, currently, I think, a symbol of the uh, migrant crisis, a sort of rotting, empty hulk <laughs> <laughs> down in, down in uh, Portland in Dorset. Uh, now, Suella Bravan, the Home Secretary, says it's ready to roll again. They've got rid of the Legionnaires' disease, new water systems, everything is ready yeah. so the migrants can come back on board. The Fire Brigade Union say, oh, you can't do that because we've decided it's a fire risk. Uh, and they've written some sort of preliminary action letter. Uh, I'm not sure what that means, but I'm, I assume it's threatening potential industrial action. Uh, should the Home Secretary order migrants back on board? Uh, I, mean, yeah, this, but, I mean, this barge has been an unmitigated <laughs> catastrophe. It has not. It's not been a success, and it could never. It would never have made a significant difference anyway. I mean, the the point is, we've got you know a backlog of 170,000 asylum seekers, I think, and the, you know this this barge, even if it could accommodate all the people it's supposed to, that's 500 people. It's, it's a it's a drop in the ocean. Um, let's talk uh, more. Uh, well, actually, let's stick with this for just a second because I want to basically talk about the uh, upcoming election. Um, Labour got a seven, about an average of a 17 point lead now, which I would suggest isn't entirely unassailable should they put a lot of feet wrong. Uh, ULEZ might be the biggest foot they put wrong. Um, but uh, the, the migrant crisis. You know, in a way, it's sort of, it seems to me, is kind of the equivalent of Labour's ULEZ problem. <laughs> uh, you know, it could sink uh, Rishi because he's getting nowhere with it. He keeps it's... making these pledges. Absolutely. And, and at the weekend, you know, the latest of these empty statements, oh, we, we might electronically tag them. I bet they don't. Yeah. Uh, and what good would it do anyway? Exactly. Um, exactly. Yeah. And, and uh, all, all, I mean, three of his five pledges that he announced with great fanfare at the beginning of the year 
so that people could judge him by the end of the year and he could say, oh, look, I'm achieving, I'm achieving stuff for you. Right, I'm ready, for, ready to fight an election. Three of them have gone, uh, yeah. have gone out. Yeah, well, yeah, the, yeah. To stop the boats, that was never going to happen. Um, halving inflation is a bit touch and go. The NHS waiting lists are, uh, are not there. Getting the debt down is not there. Yeah. It's, um, it's, it's not looking good for him. You're absolutely right. Um, so, uh, Labour, uh, you know, who are wont to pluck defeat from the jaws of victory, uh, that's their stock in trade. It'd be quite an achievement uh, to do that this time. Uh, but uh, do, do Starmer is um, sort of a long way ahead. You, I mean, he can hang on to that lead, well, that Ulez been... notwithstanding. Well, I think he has shown a, s a certain amount of ruthlessness in, um, in making sure that there's nothing that, that stands between him and, uh, him and, and, and the voters. Um, you know, some some of his party are beginning to get a bit restless, but I mean, on the on the other hand, they've been out of power for a long time. They want to win, uh, and they're prepared to put up with pretty much anything. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's that Starmer is purely focused on achieving power, and right now he doesn't really care how he, he does it as long as he keeps the electorate on his side. Yeah. Well, absolutely, and that's why we had Rachel Reeves, shadow chancellor, at the weekend. Uh, saying she's not going to put up any taxes at all, yeah. apart from the the three that she specified, which is VAT on school fees, ab abolishing non doms, yeah. and some yeah. something nobody yeah. understands about private equity funds. Right, and uh, I mean that's the extraordinary thing, isn't it? I mean people. Well, I'm not saying that I'm sort of uber rich to say the least, uber poor more like. But, uh, <laughs> but you, when she says no more taxes on the rich, you think, hang on a second. Uh, isn't that the Tories who are supposed to say that? Yeah. I mean, that, that, that to me is a bit like the way the Tories trying to say we're terribly green. So it, that's a sort of land grab on, on uh, what they see as a disintegrating Tory administration. Uh, well, it? absolutely. I and mean, it's, 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 it's the Blairite uh, playbook. I mean, Tony Blair said uh, no increases in income tax and then put up all sorts of other, yeah. other taxes afterwards. But, yeah. um, it's, the same, it's the same idea that you've got to reassure the voters that you're not interested in in taxing the rich because if you do that then people will think oh well they're going to come after me next it's a very blairite thing of her to say isn't it very. Uh, and uh to wit to how much uh, uh do you think that tony blair is responsible for this kind of shift in emphasis on the part no, of the it, it's, it's it, i don't think it's particularly him in in person although i'm sure he would advise them to do that yeah. but i think it's uh, i think the blairite truths are eternal and that's uh, that's how you win elections is by uh, is, is by persuading Tory-minded swing voters that you can be trusted. Yeah, exactly right. This is sort of my last question to you, really. Tony Blair uh, su successfully persuaded the people, I think with justification, that he was a sensible Labour leader. Yeah. Uh, in your uh, expert opinion, will, uh, or if he wins the election, will Keir Starmer be a Blair-like, sensible Labour leader? Well, that is the, the the huge question because I don't think Keir Starmer is like Tony Blair. I don't think Keir Starmer has Tony Blair's um, centrist instincts. So I think uh, I think there's a big question mark about what he would do uh, once he got into power. Yeah. Uh, but on the other hand, you know, once you're in power, you want to stay in power. So you want to win the the next election, and the the best way to do that is the Blairite way of continuing to reassure the voters you won over. Absolutely. Let's uh, finish on an entertaining or virtual irrelevance, but it will be a great story. Uh, will uh, Jeremy Corbyn stand as an independent in North Is Islington? That's, a, that's another very good question. I suspect, um, I suspect not in the end. Um, for fear of losing? For fear of losing, absolutely. Because I'm think... told by people that, by, you know, funnily enough, I have lots of friends in Islington who used, <laughs> used to live there. You're a sort of North, I was, London, I was North London liberal. Yeah, I was thrown out, thrown out as, a, as a, 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 a spy and a traitor. Um, yeah, I'm secret, yeah, now, now in Hampstead, you know, it's, it's a tough life. Uh, but seriously, um, uh, I'm told by them that if he stood as a, an independent, he would win, but I'm, I doubt mm, I'm not sure that's true. I yeah. mean, I think, yeah, he would get thousands and thousands of votes. He would be a very, a very unusual candidate. There'd be yeah. a national focus yeah. Yeah. Uh, on that, uh, on the election in that constituency. Yeah. Um, but even so, you know, the party system is incredibly strong. Yeah. Uh, and provided Labour choose a, yeah. a decent candidate, and that yeah. means someone who yeah. looks competent and, and, and moderate yeah. and, and sensible and, and humble, uh, then I think he can be beaten. So Corbyn will bow out bravely, saying it's time, you know, time to move on. Well, he is on, quite but, old, but he's but he's probably more worried that he could lose. 
Yeah, well, he's he's late. What is he? Late seventies. Yeah, I mean, he is, you know, it's it's, 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 it's time it's time for him to call it a day. I yeah, well, I've, well, I've been saying that for about a decade. <laughs> uh, but there you are. Hey, John, uh, thanks so much for coming in. That was fantastic. My John pleasure. Rental, chief political commentator of the Independent, there. And uh, next up.